Ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally come. A toxic downpour falls over the wasteland seas. Do you know what that means? We can now go ahead and battle, finally, the acid rain event. It's here number one which also has some of my favorite all-time music the acid rain music music which i literally listen to in my downtime outside of playing the game so um yeah i'm rather a fan of this my friends but anyways welcome back to another episode here of terraria modded from the calamity mod i do hope you guys have a fantastic day thank you so much as always for all of your wonderful support throughout the series my friends i very much do appreciate it now, of course, if you guys want to continue showing your support for the series, the best and easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like. If you want to go one further with your support, though, go ahead and use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get a discount when ordering any of my Apex gaming PC. So, uh, yeah, if you can't tell in my voice already, I'm pretty chuffed. It's about bleeding time that we had this event start. So, uh, yeah, very, very good. So, what's coming up after this, anyway? Crab your lot. Could we go ahead and take on Crabulon today, my friendos? That is the question, isn't it? I honestly have no idea. All we need to do is not get too ahead of ourselves. We need to actually take down this event first, eh? Oh, man, I love this music. <laughs> It's actually fantastic. It truly is, my friends. Which is why I've got the game sounds turned down so you can actually hear the music for a little bit as I uh, head bash my way to victory. So for any of you guys wondering why we are going ahead and doing the Acid Rain event, it's because we can get ourselves some Sulfurous Scales, I think they are. And as a result of getting those bad boys, we can make ourselves... A whole bunch of epic stuff. We can make ourselves the Sulfurous Armor, an Effigy of Decay, the Caustic Tear, so we can actually summon in future Acid Rain events as well. And a whole bunch of other stuff as well, if we so wish. The Basher, the Toxibow, the Acid Gun. Oh, snappers, the Caustic Crocus Staff. Ooh, summons a toad that explodes if enemies are nearby. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. I'm assuming that this is like a sentry. I mean, it's got purple summon damage as opposed to pink summon damage. And I'm pretty sure purple means that it is a sentry weapon, which is basically like a subclass of summoner, I guess. All right, let's give this thing an actual go. The crocus staff. Put that down there. Oh, my word. <laughs> it's like a little landmine, like a cluster landmine. Gee whiz. <laughs> this is kind of epic, actually. The only thing is, of course, you have to go ahead and keep on placing it back down, which therefore kind of means that it's not overly effective against crowds, probably. So, um, yeah. Hello, man. I don't know if we're going to wind up using it, but it's a cool looking weapon at the very least. All right, my friends, finally nearing the end of the Acid Rain event. Now, similar to other events, say the Old One's Army, this actually has, I'm pretty sure, three tiers to it. So, yeah, later on down the line, yep, there we are, Acid Rain Tier 1 done. Uh, we've got Acid Rain here post-AS, post-Aquatic Scourge, that is. Uh, we have Acid Rain way, way later over here as well, post-Poltergeist. Blimey, O'Reilly! Oh, Poltergast, not Poltergeist, Poltergast. So, yeah, three tiers of Acid Rain, and numero uno has just been taken out of the game. So then, there we are. Not really too much to uh, talk about. We do have ourselves a nuclear toad banner, which I guess is pretty all right. We got ourselves quite a lot of gold coins out of that as well, which is definitely very all right. Uh, obviously, the caustic croaker staff, kind of cool, but not overly effective, if I'm being honest. The sulfuric scales, though, let's be honest, these are the things that we're going to be doing stuff with to start this episode off, or to continue this episode on. Uh, so, we need ourselves Acid wood, urchin stingers, sulfurous sand. That's actually not overly difficult. Ah, according to this, there's 101 of them inside of this chest here. Okay, lovely. Uh, sulfurous sand? What if I just put sand? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's not checking the sand over that side. Yeah, there we are. Oh, I knew we had some sulfurous sand. Where is it? There's the acid wood as well. Oh, yeah. There we are. Sulfurous uh, breastplate, sulfurous helmet, and of course, the sulfurous leggings. Lovely. And look at that. We can even make ourselves acid wood furniture if we so wished. Ah, oh, the basher inflicts irradiated on enemy hits. That sounds pretty cool, man. Converts wood arrows into slow arrows that inflict irradiated. 
I mean, is that really worth it? I'm pretty sure it is, because I'm pretty sure you can make it into the Corroded Corsta Bow. There it is. For those of you guys unaware, in the previous Calamity series that we did in 1.3, the Corsta Bow actually turned out to be a rather marvellous weapon, especially against the mech bosses. Might as well make the effigy of the case, since we're here. We have ourselves the Acid Gun and the Basher. And the cool thing is, we have enough resources to make both. So... Yeah. Okay, full auto, 36 true melee damage, and this thing... Oh! Hey! Oh, man, that's actually making me uh, want to switch to a mage loadout. I'm not even lying. <laughs> oh, no idea. All right, what have we got here? Rogue damage? Rogue damage. It's a rogue set of armor. Huh. Contaminated bile. It's not consumable as well, which means it should only be the one thing that we need. Uh, we need ourselves bottled water, and we also need to just head on over to a bottle. And there we have it, the contaminated bile. Oh, snappers. Alrighty, real quick. I'm not even entirely sure that we're going to wind up using these weapons all that much. But I do want to see if I can't get myself some uh, good little reforges on here. There we are. A little bit of legendary for your boy. And, well, mythical, let's be honest, is going to be the thing that we want on here. There we are. 23 magic damage times by, presumably, 3. So, strictly speaking, 69 damage if all of those hit. Right? The traveling merchant is selling a chef's outfit. Okay. <laughs> so then, ladies and gentlemen, we are going from 38 defense down to 35. That's only a decrease of three. But here we are with a set bonus. We now have ourselves a stealth meter. Attacking and being attacked by enemies inflicts poison. Grants an additional jump that summons a sulfurous bubble. Provides increased underwater mobility and reduces the severity of sulfuric waters. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. All right, so far I'm noticing two things that I might be able to make here. We've got ourselves the Coin of Deceit, which is a material. Stealth strikes only expend 75% of your max stealth and 6% increased rogue crit chance. The Raider's Talisman is something else that I have uh, noticed here. Again, a material. Whenever you crit an enemy with a rogue weapon, your rogue damage increases. That sounds very, very handy dandy. This effect can stack up to 150 times. Gee, max rogue damage boost is 15%. So, yeah, leather and obsidian, and then gold, copper, and acid wood. Yeah, look at that. Rotten chunks or vertebrae are required to make leather. I mean, let's be honest, leather isn't used in very many things, is it? So, uh, yeah, kind of cool that the Calamity mod has added a recipe or two for it to be used in. All right, the coin of deceit, we could go ahead and make that right about now. So, real quick, we're checking out what the coin of deceit can be made into. We've got the ruined medallion, which requires unholy cores and essences of chaos. Things which actually... It won't be overly far before we can go ahead and uh, get those things. Uh, this remains a material as well for the Dark God's Sheath, which remains a material for the Eclipse Mirror. Good grief. Once again, a ginormous freaking tooltip, which, frankly, I can't be bothered to read out. That's a lot of stuff, though, isn't it? <laughs> In terms of the Raider's Talisman, yes, we can get the leather pretty quick, but the Obsidian, believe it or not, is actually the limiting factor. We have no Obsidian. Can we, like, make Obsidian? Like, is that even possible? Obsidian walls? Uh, oh. None needs water, needs lava. Huh. So you can literally just make obsidian out of stone. I'm also kind of interested to see what the contaminated bile can be made into. So let's have a bit of a look. See? The acidic rain barrel. Uh, requires a blast barrel and corroded fossils. Ooh, okay. This requires, what, a tier 2 acid rain event, I think? So that's interesting. Uh, the blast barrel... Oh, that's actually gone from the wall of flesh. I mean, that's still pretty mad, though, isn't it? 256 rogue damage, and that's not even taken into consideration what stealth damage might bring it up to. <laughs> Well, my friends, there is a one surefire easy way of getting down to the lava level. We go ahead and uh, pop ourselves down to our gem pile on here. And we do a little bit of blowy uppy. Yes, yes, that is what we are going to do. If I can literally just attach myself here and let the bombs do the talking. And then when you run out of bombs, but so happen to bump into a cave system, just go down. 
down, 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 and down again, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We got some lava. Very, very cool. Now, if I was to somehow be able to bring this tiny little slither of water over to the lava, right? Ideally, without obsidianizing it, then what? I should be able to go ahead and make infinite obsidian, yes? All right, so all we need to do is go ahead and uh, bring this water source down here. There we are. And can we make the obsidian? Yeah! <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah! Making obsidian. What a freaking 9001 IQ move that was, my friends. Come on. The good news is as well, look at the amount of rotten chunks we have. It is ridiculous. So uh, let's pop on into the crafting table here. There is the leather. Uh, wait, can we not make any more leather? Why was I only able to make three bits of leather? Oh, right. Aha, uh -huh, there we are. Okay, that'll do the job. Right, uh, where do I now make the talisman thingy? Uh, talisman? Oh, uh, talisman. There it is. The Raiders talisman. Found it. Got him. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we now need to make a decision as to the accessories that we are actually going to take off in favor of our rogue accessories. Well, my friends, as nice as the tiger climbing gear and especially the flying carpet is, I think we are going to go ahead and retire them, uh, at least temporarily for now. This will be made eventually into the Master Ninja gear and this will eventually be made into what? The Auric Tesla armor, I think. Yeah, there we are. The, uh, the leggings for it. Oh, man. That is so far off from being able to be made. It's ridiculous. Alrighty, so time to go ahead and get ourselves some decent reforges. We are looking, I mean, again, warding, menacing. So there we have it. We've got ourselves a bit of warding on the coin of deceit, bringing us up to 35 defense. And again, this one actually doesn't cost that much to reforge. So once again, we're looking for menacing or warding. We got warding and then I cycled past it. To get warding again. Good job there, Python. You actually just wasted a bit of your money, you big doofus. With the Scourge of the Desert, we could go ahead and reforge that up to Flawless. Yes. There we have it. Love to see it. Uh, what else have we got here? Demonic Artery. Not entirely sure we can go too much higher than that. Uh, superior? Godly. Yeah, there we have it. Uh, Enchanted Sword. That could be made up to Legendary, of course. So give it a few reforges. And there we have it. Love to see it. Okay. Not bad, eh? So, the episode end goal is Crabulon, okay? The Decapodita Sprout is required. And in order to make that, I'm pretty sure we just need ourselves mushrooms. Yep, there we have it. And the other good thing is check out this mushroom biome anyway. It's super freaking flat. This is the ideal sort of location where we could go ahead and take on and hopefully defeat Crabulon. In order to maximize our ability to, you know, move, we're going to go ahead and slightly cover up this uh, little pond here. And uh, well, for the most part, since we don't have a great deal of mud blocks, we'll go ahead and use the glowing mushrooms themselves. And then we should be good to go. We'll go ahead, maybe get ourselves a campfire, maybe a little bit of heart lanternage down here, and that should hopefully do the job. I mean, come on. This is a pretty ginormous area. All right, my friends, let's get ourselves some nice basic buffs. We've got iron skin, we've got regen, a little bit of thorns. Is heart rage going to be that useful? I don't know. Uh, reduces damage by 5%. Ah, Calamity has overhauled this potion there. Eh? Normally it does 10% damage reduction, but uh, there we have it. Uh, never mind. We do still have plenty of other stuff that we could be getting ourselves. Although, actually, I say that, there really isn't actually a great deal of other stuff. We'll go ahead and buy the heart reach just because sod it, it's there. And uh, yeah, this should be just about it. All right, there it is, my friends. The Decapodita Sprout non-consumable as always which means we can go ahead and give this boss as many goes as we like so ladies and gentlemen the time has come we are going to buff up and we are going to do this thing with our little rogue loadout i'm excited for this man i'm excited to see how this goes uh crabulon you need to come down buddy there you are 
Yeah. All right. So we're going to use the contaminated bile here just because I kind of want to see what it can do, really. All right. So we need to not get too ahead of ourselves, of course, my friendos. If we get too ahead of ourselves, then, uh, yeah, this whole bullet hell thing, it's going to get on top of us very, very quickly. Let's have ourselves a little bit of the old uh, adrenaline here, my friends. That is going to be a fantastic start for your boy. You love to see it. About a third of the way down already. All right. Now it's starting to get a little bit annoyed, I would say. So why don't I go ahead and get myself annoyed by activating the range buff? A little bit of damage for your boy. All right. Halfway down, my friends. Halfway down. <laughs> oh, man. I am liking this weapon and loadout, dude. <laughs> this is fantastic. I wonder if I could... Ah, oh, done. Oh, jeez. Okay, just took a little bit of a, a string of damage there. Still got to be careful. One third health remaining. Rather a lot of projectiles being spewed my way. But no matter. I think we should still have this in the... Oh, good God. I think we should still have this in the bag. 1,700 health. <laughs> this little contaminated vial. It is nice, man. Oh, dude. Come on. Are we about to have ourselves a nice, beautiful, deathless episode for once? Hey, I think we might, because ladies and gentlemen, 400 health, 300, 200, 100, and there we have it. <laughs> oh, mate, that's fantastic. All right, we got ourselves the treasure bag. We even got a trophy first time. I mean, that is pretty badass, isn't it, my friends? Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. All right, so let's go and open up the treasure bag. Did we get a mask? Uh, no, I do not believe that we did. The reason why we are after masks with the Calamity bosses, of course, is because we don't have Master Mode exclusive drops to put in their little display areas in our base, of course. So, yeah, we're going to need to go ahead and keep on taking this guy down until we get a mask. Yeah! Little bit of adrenaline again. All right. It's nice to know that I'm capable of getting adrenaline even sort of later on into the fight here. I think that's great. I must admit, the Death Stare Rod is rather carrying me here, especially in terms of getting rid of the little projectiles above. I think it's great. I really, really do. So, come on, fellas. Keep it going. There we are. He is taken out of the game. And opening this thing up, we got ourselves... Oh, yeah, that's right. The Mushroom Plasma Root. Revengeance Drop increases the duration of Rage Mode by a second. I mean, it's only a second, but, you know, any duration is good duration. I just realized as well that we did not go through the lore item here. Crabulon, a crab and its mushrooms, a love story. It's interesting how creatures can adapt given certain circumstances. Absolutely. Sadly, my friends, there's no sign of a mask still. Come on, fellas. I know we can get it. Today is the episode of good things happening. All right, good things happening and no debt. Rogue proficiency level up. Oh, yeah. Finally starting to level up that bad boy. All right, so there's another relic. And the mycelial claws. Hey, we've got ourselves a mini crabulon that we can summon now. <laughs> it's tiny. Look at him. I must admit, though, I think I prefer the little baby eye of Cthulhu. I mean, you know, why wouldn't you prefer it? The ultimate dirty combo, my friends. Rage plus adrenaline. Oh, yeah. Doing all the damage. I'm giving the Scourge of the Desert a bit of a go here. Uh, I must admit, though, I think I'm preferring the Bile. It's just so nice. It does lasting damage as well. You know? It's, it's decent, man. Another one bites the dust. We got ourselves a plushy that time. Come on. How about a mask? Nope. We have ourselves... Well, we actually got ourselves a new rogue weapon. Ooh. Well, well, well. This could be a bit of a turn up, eh? Infested Claw Meringue. Oh, okay. The only thing is, it's not like full auto. I have to keep clicking to use it. Ah, my poor fingers, man. Ah, jeez. Okay, okay. There we go. Fight done. <laughs> Okay, what do we got this time? Uh, ah, oh, jeez. Hey, we got ourselves the Myco Root. Oh, I forgot about that bad boy. Do we put the fungal clump on, guys? Do we go ahead and do that? I 
feel like that'd be a pretty good idea. You know? So, uh, what's the best one out of all of this? I mean, plus 1% damage. Oh, armored. Okay, no, that'll do the job quite nicely, actually. <laughs> Go on, fungal clump. You and me and the myco root. We are absolutely going to wreck shop. <laughs> the health is just draining away. The only thing is, of course, we need to stay pretty close to this guy. Otherwise, we're not going to be actually doing damage. In fact, look at that. Oh, my word. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, my God. This with adrenaline and rage at the same time is a dirty little weapon. <laughs> okay, my reservations about the range of this thing, I think, are unfounded. I mean, it's still quite clearly absolutely decimating this poor fella. So, uh, yeah. You made a mistake giving me all of these beautiful things. <laughs> all right, Coolio. Opening it up. And what do you know? I do not believe that we got ourselves a mask again. You know what? I don't know why I was dithering on the fungal clump. The health regen that it gives makes it so, so worthwhile. It's unbelievable. You know what? That actually got pretty close. And that's because I didn't actually have any health potions on me. Um, <laughs> Still no sign, my friends. Still no sign. How? How is it possible that we still have no sign of the freaking mask? Holy crap! I mean, it's not a mask, but the laudanum is a fantastic drop. It's certainly a rarer one. It is indeed a revengeance drop. Debuffs affected. Darkness, blackout, confused, slow, weak, broken armor, armor crunch, chilled eichel, and obstructed... And yeah, it converts certain debuffs, the ones I just listed, into buffs and extends durations. That is beautiful. Yeah! I set out to complete a task and I bloody well did it! <laughs> oh, snappity snap snappers. Very nice. There we are. That is Crabulon officially done. So there we are. The law item. The little relic has been placed out. And of course, because this is a calamity boss, it is going to be the mask that we are looking for. Similar to the Desert Scourge previous. So, yeah. Very, very cool. All right. All that's left to be done is to go ahead and decide on a color for this guy. I'm thinking blue, similar to King Slime here, because, I mean, it's a very blue, blue mushroom boss, right? So, yeah. It makes sense. So then, my friends, a couple of things. Number one, I really do need to be going ahead and making myself a proper build to display the comment of the day signs because at the moment, they're kind of strewn all across the world, very unorganized and very just sort of blah. So, yeah, we need to do something about that. But anyways, talking of that, we do have the comment of the day coming from Akshay, who says, Hey, Python, since you love fishing so much, try fishing in the Sulfura Sea for the alluring bait. It buffs your fishing stats drastically. Let's go ahead and... And have a little bit of a look. I think it's in, what, items, maybe? Alluring... Oh, here we go. Alluring bait. Greatly increases chance of catching potion ingredient fish. Ooh! That does sound fantastic. Thank you so much for turning my attention to this. All right. So, if you're a sea fishing, maybe we'll go ahead and get that done in the next episode, okay? For now, though, my friends, it is time to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's nice action-packed episode and the fact that we have switched to a rogue loadout, then do be sure, of course, to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. It really does take a second, and it really does help out myself, the video, and the channel massively. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for all of your support. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.